Hey, good morning, guys and girls. Um, it's been a while since I've done a live uh, tech talk, but I always enjoy it. So <clears throat> without, you know, tech talks are, are quite uh, uh, short and sweet things, so I'm not going to do a whole big spiel. Um, many of you probably uh, re remember me from a couple of tech talks. Uh, my name is Richard Bailey. I am a plumber. Um, I've been a plumber for a while. I'm, I'm, I'm also involved uh, with um, IOPSA as well as PIRB uh, on various sort of consultancy basis. And um, I'm also an auditor for the PIRB or for, the, for IOPSA more accurately and um, have been for about seven or eight years. So, um, yeah, I've, I've done, a, done a bit. And what I'm doing right now is, is more of a consultancy role, I suppose you could say, which I'm really, really enjoying. I've, it's a change from a, from a, from a, a hands-on plumber, shall we say. Okay, well, this, this morning we're going to talk about stratification. But before we get into it, you know, we all, we're all aware that we're in this uh, thing called the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, just to reiterate and retouch on it, Guys, we need to be careful. I know that it's been 18 months or almost two years that we have to put up with this and, and lockdowns and everything, but it, it is an ongoing thing. And they're talk, starting to talk about wave number four. Um, and uh, we know in Cape Town, where I am, the, wave, the third wave is only just starting to crest. Um, you know, it's been, it, it's, it's kind of been and gone should we say, or it's starting to dissipate inland and in Joburg and you guys in Joburg and, and inland have had it and well, you still got it, but you've had the peak and you're now starting to decline and we are now at the peak in, in Cape Town. So it's, it's never sort of predictable. So guys, just remember, wear your mask, wash your hands, Use the correct sort of uh, sanitizer when you go out. You know, there's a lot of false, well, sanitizers that don't actually do anything. Um, there are, <laughs> there's people that don't don't really believe in any any of this, but but um, it is important that that we just remind you to to keep doing this sort of so, the doing this sort of thing. So avoid touching your eyes and your nose and your mouth when you haven't washed your hands. So in other words, just keep. Uh, breaking that contamination chain between eyes, hands, mouth, and and whatever contaminants you've been touching during the day. Don't get into close contact with people that are sick. Um, obviously, uh, that's a that's a no brainer. And when you cough or sneeze, cover your uh, cover it with a flexed elbow. And you know, I think old Cyril showed us how to do it one day on TV with a flexed elbow or the tissue. But then chuck that chuck that thing in the in the bin or the toilet or wherever, and then clean objects and surfaces uh, as, as, as quickly as possible and as often as possible with, uh, with a disinfectant of, of your choice. Okay, so let's get into stratification. It's, uh, you know, like most of these tech talks that I do and, and the tech talks that I have done, it, it, we are all familiar with the concept and we know what it is. It's not, a, it's not, I'm, I'm not going to introduce you to anything new. So it's, it's almost like, well, why are we bothering looking at this? Well, um, you know, the hope is that there's a couple of uh, pointers or, 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 or nuggets of information that uh, I'm able to sort of remind ourselves about oopsie sorry that shouldn't have happened and um that we remind ourselves about and just reinforce our knowledge as to and remind ourselves why it is so important and just to get sort of just a sort of a refresher so what is stratification okay so stratification basically um is is a buildup of layers and those layers within a storage tank and for the purposes of this tech talk we're talking about a geezer and within a geyser, there are going to be layers of temperature. And it occurs in storage tank, in a, in a storage tank where thermal energy is stored. So whenever you're storing thermal energy in a storage tank, in other words, it's above the temperature of, of the uh, ambient air. In other words, it's above ambient temperature. When that occurs, you will have um, thermal energy stored in a tank. And it will have, naturally, it will start to form stratification layers. So as you can see from those, those pictures above, basically, hot water is uh, less dense than cold water because of the fact that it is, uh, it's, it's more excited. The molecules, it's, the molecules are actually moving around a lot more. And so they push each other apart 
uh, rather than uh, sort of cuddle close together. So the hotter the water is, the more excited the molecules are, which means that they are further apart from one another, which means that there are less molecules in a liter of hot water than there are molecules in a liter of cold water. So for that reason, it is actually lighter than cold water and it will start to rise, it will start to float. And these stratification layers will naturally start to form. Um, of course, there is a place or a, or, a, or, a, or a contact patch between the hot zone and the cold zone, and that will eventually start to mix. So yes, we understand that stratification is not going to be maintained forever, just left as is. But of course, we in a geyser, we always have a heat source which continually heats up more water. And that water will find its way to the top. And essentially what you want in a tank uh, or geyser is where your hot water is at the top. It's usable and it's available. And the cold water is out of the way of the draw off of the tank. And that's why we need a, a very careful stratification layer. Okay, So it is necessary to actively maintain and protect the layers. If we disrupt those layers, Put it this way, it is possible to disrupt the layers. Okay, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, and as I've already said, as you start to leave things status quo, over time, of course, the whole tank will, will uh, become a uniform uh, um, temperature. And of course, eventually, it'll become um, the same temperature as the, as the ambient. But um, that's not the case in a normal geyser, because we, as I've said, we've, had a, we've, we've, got, a, we've got a heat source. So why must we maintain stratification layers? Simply put, and, 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 and there's not much more to say here, when, when the layers are not maintained, in other words, when you start to mix cold and hot water and the water becomes lukewarm in the tank, you, um, uh, you lose the capacity of the tank. So the tank itself loses capacity. In other words, if you've got a 150 liter tank, uh, my, my apologies, this thing is self-forwarding. So when you've got a 150 liter tank and you don't have properly controlled stratification layers, what tends to happen is you use 20 or 30 liters of it or even less sometimes. And then of course it goes down to um, uh, uh, lukewarm and you are unable to effectively use that hot water. Although the, the, the amount of energy is still in the tank, but you cannot use it because it's mixed with the cold water and it becomes lukewarm and it's not so lacking. So the capacity of the tank uh, disappears. And that is, the, that is the bottom line. So when you have, um, can I say, um, uh, stratification layers that is not being maintained properly, you will have clients that are complaining about things like, hey, you know, I've just had half a shower or five or three minutes into my shower, um, I start to experience lukewarm water. Or they, I, I run out of hot water because they don't have the technical background or the technical know-how and to know what exactly um, is going on. So if you have a situation where a client is saying, well, I've got that, this is sometimes the, the, the issue. In heat pump situations, you've got a flow and return which uh, continually, as when the heat pump is on, when that continually uh, suck water from and re return water to the tank. And if that is not properly controlled, you've got, uh, you've got issues because it will disrupt stratification layers and you will start to have mixing through the, uh, well, mixing of the temperatures and lukewarm water will result. So that is often a, a, a problem. So what can disrupt stratification layers? I've already alluded to um, the uh, heat pump situation. But for example, if you've got a normal conventional geyser, you, you, you will see that there is a, um, a baffle. Okay, so the things that, when, when you allow hot, a cold water into a, a storage tank, there will always be a baffle. Because you've got a stream of cold water and we've just spoken about stratification and the importance to keep it, you've got a baffle. So it will dissipate the stream of cold water coming into that tank. If you were to just take a jet of water or a hose pipe and stick it at the bottom of a, of a tank and open it up fully, you will, you will cause disruption and those stratification layers will go all haywire. So you will always have some sort of a baffle. Um, if you look in old copper geysers, they're quite... Uh, can I say rudimentary 
in uh, modern geysers, they they usually made out of sort of plastic and 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 um, uh, are a lot more effective in dissipating that stream. So effectively, it just wants to filter that cold water into the bottom of the cylinder, and that cold water in turn then displaces the hot water which is above it. So if it's not baffled, or if that baffle has disintegrated or come loose, that is an immediate cause for unstratified well unstratified water or unstratified tanks and that's when you'll start getting clients phoning you about uh, i've got no more hot water so if the primary loop of a solar system is incorrectly uh, connected for example um, or if the temperature probe malfunctions what do i mean by the temperature probe? obviously the the primary loop is is self-explanatory where it's circulating in in a way in that it's not supposed to be circulating especially in a pumped system where you force that circulation. So if you've swapped those two, uh, um, the, the primary loop around, you, you, you're pulling water from the wrong place and putting water back into the wrong place as well, if that makes sense. But then the temperature probe also in a pump system tells the pump when to start and when to stop. So if that is malfunctioning and the pump starts and stops at the wrong times, in other words, if it starts to circulate and deposit water from the collector into the geyser when the collector's water isn't hot, it obviously will cause cold water to be deposited into the tank, and that'll cause that'll disrupt the stratification. Um, if a pumped system does not have this is a solar system does not have a, a means to prevent reverse thermosiphon, which is to say that if overnight and the uh, uh, the um, the collector obviously is standing outside on the roof and it is cold outside because it's nighttime. The same principle occurs, hot water wants to rise and it will find its way to the highest point in the system, which is the collector. It then gives off its heat and then circulates back down to the geyser. But that reverse thermosiphon of itself will also disrupt stratification. And then finally, if a hot return pipe from a heat pump which is quite a common thing. Uh, it's one of the most common causes for disruption of stratification. If the hot return from a heat pump uh, is not connected properly to the geyser, it will put cooler water into the top of the geyser because you will return, uh, connect the return pipe of a, of, a, of a heat pump into the top of the geyser, usually into the hot, uh, to the uh, TP port. And if it is not, uh, a heat pump with a mixing valve, that water is only a few degrees warmer than, than the cold water that is drawing off the bottom of that tank. So you are basically putting cold water to the top of the tank. So you have to control the return loop of a heat pump into the geyser. And that is very, very often the cause of bad stratification. And often you'll find clients say, oh, I've just had this heat pump installed. Um, and, you know, all of a sudden, I used to be able to have three showers and now I can only have like one shower and I've got no more hot water. This thing's not working. It's not the heat pumps problem. It's a stratification problem. So how do we preserve stratification layers? We've already spoken about a geyser's uh, baffle. Uh, the cold inlet of a geyser has to have a baffle. If you're going to allow a, a jet or a stream of cold water into the bottom of the tank, you are going to disrupt that because it's, it stands to reason. In fact, if you look at bigger um, solar, uh, well, heat storage tanks, and they don't, they don't necessarily have to be pressure tanks, but some of the bigger installations like 2000 liter um, heat exchange uh, uh, storage tanks, where you have a non-potable or, a, or a, an indirect heating situation, um, which I don't have a picture of, but th the point I'm making is that if you have multiple heating sources in some of these systems, for example, you've got a solar collector, you've also got a, um, a, a heat pump connected as well, you'll have various points of temperature measurement. And depending on the temperature of the water coming into the tank, it will then, by, via a manifold and a, and, a, and a smart controller, it will then decide at which level 
the water enters that tank. In other words, you've got three entry points, for example, into a tank. One in the lower third, one kind of in the middle, and one in the top. And depending on the temperature of the water coming in, it'll deposit that water in one of those three ports, depending on where, where it fits in with that tank, if that makes sense. I know it's a bit of a, a difficult thing to explain without visuals, but that's the importance of keeping stratification layers. So in, in bigger systems where they know that different temperature water is going to be entering the tank, they actually separate it out and they bring it in, in different places altogether. And that is, that just goes to show that people go to a lot of trouble to maintain uh, stratification layers. And so it must also then speak to the importance of stratification layers. Remember, guys, this is something that will have a direct uh, impact on the on what the user experiences from the tank. So it is <clears throat> directly responsible for uh, a, a, a very dissatisfied company, uh, c customer, if I can say it like that. It, it, it's not something that is just a small little issue. It will immediately cause a very, well, a normal customer to become very dissatisfied with the whole installation. So it, it is that important. Okay, carrying on how do we preserve? A solar system must be properly connected and temperature probes in place, like we've already said, so that pumps operate at the correct time. So if you have the connections in the wrong places or if the pumps are operating sort of uh, when they feel like it, that's an issue. And then a hot return of a heat pump has to be connected in an approved way. So when that hot water returns, as I said a minute ago, it's only a few degrees warmer because when once it's done, a, a, um, a cycle and it's gone through the heat pump and it returns to the geyser, it's only two or three degrees warmer than it was when it left the geyser at the bottom. So that needs to be um, properly controlled. There's two ways of doing that. So if it's a heat pump without a mixing valve, uh, in other words, if it's just a straight return from the heat pump into the geyser, you will have what we call a diffuser pipe. So the, the connection to the geyser is usually at the TP port, as I say, quite high. Uh, it's it's the, certainly the top third of the geyser. And, but if we, there's a diffuser pipe that gets inserted through that port, which basically brings that water down to the bottom third of the geyser. In other words, when the water flows into that port, it is deposited near the bottom of the geyser instead of the top. So you have to have a diffuser pipe in there if it is a design with a mixing valve, there is a thermostatically controlled mixing valve, which, and I'm not going to go into detail, but essentially it prevents the heated water from the heat pump. It prevents that water from entering the tank immediately. It instead forces it into a closed little loop at the heat pump. And when once that water has reached a, in other words, it forces it back to the heat pump and then measures the temperature and then forces it back to the heat pump and measures the temperature and gradually the temperature of that water increases. And when once it's reached a temperature which is acceptable, it will then allow that water to be deposited into the geyser. So essentially what's happening is we are only depositing properly heated water, at least 45 degree water into the geyser, which uh, in turn means that we are maintaining those stratification layers. Okay, so that's pretty much it, uh, short and sweet. Uh, as I said, you know, we, we, we all know what stratification is, but it's good to remind ourselves as to the importance of stratification and why we need to maintain it and how to maintain it.